قد ايه في يكون الشخص طبيعي قدام الكاميرا وقد ايه انت بدبي بلينج لقيتي حالك عم بتكوني طبيعيه obviously everyone has flaws right mm. so it's not like i'm going to sit with you and tell you all my flaws the first time we meet it's not acting it's just filtering certain things that you want people to see and people not to see your problem with zena was because of uh, what she said about farhana and you supporting her من شو خفتي من بعد ما صار هيدا الشيء و second it's affecting me and maybe it's going to affect people around me i don't regret anything So if you were to ask me, would you go back and change that scene? Absolutely not. I would have kept it because it made me who I am today. And I'm so proud of who I am today. And I love who I am today. And I wouldn't change a thing about it. So we're going to talk Arabic or... Let's try it. What's your opinion? Let's mix it. Mix it. So we can be nice to all the audience. So uh, it's English audience and the Arabic hala, audience. The audience comes to the comments more than the Arab people or the Arab people when we mix it. Ah, <laughs> يعني none okay. of the Arab uh, understood okay. and none of the European understood. Let's do it like Dubai Blink. You know, in Dubai yes. Blink, how it's like mostly Arabic, but yeah. there was also English. And then we can translate in Arabic. Exactly, and I'm translating. Okay, okay. بحاول, بحاول with you. I'll try. Okay. By the way, we are rolling. I know. <laughs> I've watched your podcast. I know. We, I, I've done my research. Okay. I know you start rolling before uh, the interview. I know that. So I yeah, was like prepared. Slightly before. Yeah. عادي بس مش أحلى واحد. قد إيه في يكون الشخص طبيعي. صح. أب يعني قدام الكاميرا. وقد إيه أنت بدبي بلينج لقيتي حالك عم بتكوني طبيعية. أنا في دبي بلينج like the first time uh, we filmed it. I know قلت بالعربي بس بقول بالانجليزي. Um, أول مرة كنا نصور كان وايد صعب إني أكون ناتشرال. فـ لأن كان في so many cameras, so many mic people, it was uncomfortable. بس after a while I got used to it حتى ال- ال- cameras and mic people I didn't see them. It felt like I was just looking at the person that I'm talking to and like I didn't see anything else around me. فـ it took maybe one or two scenes and then I got very comfortable like speaking on camera. being myself 100% بتعرفي بتلاقيها انه مع الوقت بتصير هي فعلا حرفه هلا الممثلين صحيح بيعرفوا يمثلوا بس هن اكثر شيء بيعرفوا يعملوه انه ما يمثلوا yeah. يوصلوا لمرحله معينه انه ما انه يكونوا طبيعيين يعني اشهر ممثل, ممثل وافضل ممثل هو اللي ما بفرج انه عم بيمثل بالضبط فهي بتاخذ شويه وقت And well, I, I mean, if you're comparing Dubai Blink to acting, it's not acting. It's just being yourself, which is the easiest thing to me, I think. Like being yourself, it's so easy. For some, for me, I don't know for other people, maybe it's hard for them to like really be themselves. Maybe they have to hide behind like a persona just to be more likable. I don't know. But I'm comfortable the way I am. For Anna, يعني, I never acted on the show or tried to show something else that I am. But going back to like what you said about acting, few real actors like in Hollywood, مثلا, um, I forgot his name, but he was the first Joker, uh, Heath Ledger. Mm-hmm. Like, Heath Ledger. So he was so into the character of the Joker that he really felt that he was the Joker. And I think that led to his yeah, suicide. suicide and what happened to him. So it is true. There are some actors that really عيشون دور لين ما يوصلون the actual character and sometimes that's very dangerous you know so mm. it's it's so true it is great acting I think I don't know if he got an Oscar for it maybe he did مفروض يعني إنه ميت الزلمة بالضبط انتحر من وراء ال التروما هو هو قد إيش شخص بيرجع بترفلكت بيشوف حاله ب بيشوف شخصيته بنظرة ما كان شايف شايفها أو بيكتشف حاله قد إيه الاكتنج او حتى رياليتي شو ممكن يكون فرجيك صوره عن حالك ما كنت بتعرفيها بالضبط اتس ا بيج سيلف ريفلكشن هيوج سيلف ريفلكشن بيينج اون رياليتي تي في اي ثينك ايفن فرذر مور ذان اكتنج يو نو ات ديبندز لايك اتس اتس ريلي هارد تو بوت رياليتي تي في وذ اكتنج بيكوز اي فيل لايك اكتنج تيكس سو ماتش مور تالنت ذاتس ذا تروث بيكوز يو هاف تو بيكم انذر بيرسون ان اكتنج رياليتي تي في يو جست يور سيلف You know, and I think if you try in reality TV, if you try to be someone that's not you, 
people, the audience are so smart, they pick it up straight away. Like, okay, that person's acting and they're not a good actor. Like, you know, they see it. So I think in the, in reality TV, the people that the audience really connect with are the ones that stay true to who they are and then are the same person on camera and off camera. So I try to do that, like the whole show, like try to be myself 100%. Yeah, but ما قد بيقدر الواحد دانيا لانه حتى كلكم كنتوا عم يو تراينج تو بي يور سيلف لانه اتس ا رياليتي شو بس قد ايه الشخص قادر يكون آه نفسه وخصوصا انه بهالاندستري او نحن عم نصور في كرو في كاميرات ما بعرف اذا في تيك 1 تيك 2 تيك 3 لا اتس جست ون تيك اتس جست ون تيك صح في ناس around you so that's what I'm saying people can tell so if there's people like the crew around you and you're like being shy but really and not and without cameras you're not a shy person the audience can tell so the best reality stars are the ones that are try to cut out the fact that there's cameras and crews around them and try to be themselves and like as in any individual yeah and I'm sitting with you There's certain things that you you have to act with camera, without camera. I have to have that respect between me and you. Like, obviously, everyone has flaws, mm. right? So it's not like I'm going to sit with you and tell you all my flaws the first time we meet. And you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's not acting. It's just filtering certain things that you want people to see and people not to see. Everyone's like that. You're like that. The person that's not on camera is like that. The Everyone you meet, to some extent, is like that. ف... يعني I don't call it acting I call it maybe filtering اجت الدرينك بالتوقيت الغلط لا عادي <تصفيق> <تصفيق> بس ما كنت بدي فوت دغري ب ب دبي بلينك although this is يعني a very significant and very um, a shining moment in your life <تصفيق> uh, بس since we talked about the subject قد ايه تعرفتي على حالك مثل ما قلنا وقد ايش تعرفتي على مروان اكثر و دي جي بليس وشو اختلفت العلاقه بيناتكم من بعد الشو يعني شو شو تعرفتوا على اشياء جديده مع بعضكم انه انا يو نو اي اكسبرس ماي سيلف انا عرفت عنك هيك ما كنت بعرف عنك مثلا بهيدي ال ال أه عبرت بطريقه مختلفه او شيء جديد شفتيه ب بمروان او بحالك uh, between me and Marwan no because he's my husband I've been with him for a really long time so and he's the same person on camera and off camera so it's not like I learned anything new I knew in certain situations how he would act I I know my husband and he knows me so I don't feel like it changed anything the only thing that changed was this was the first time we we're working together so I think he respected me more as someone like in regards to like work and how like I'm very serious about it about timings about being on set about these things so it was nice working with my husband mm. but like learning something new about his personality I nothing it was the same like it w- didn't feel like anything new بس عبرتي له عن اشياء كنت كانت بداخلك يمكن يمكن كنت بتعبري عنها بالبيت بس كنت كانت بالشو عم عم عبرتيها اكثر وهو هي رياكتد كمان لانه بحكم الشو مش عم نقول لانه فيه لازم يكون فيه اكتنج بس عم نقول لانه فيه تايمينج فبتخلي الواحد انه ياخذ الاكشن بسرعه اذا انا عبرت لك انت مجبور ترد لي ما في وقت تضيع لي وقتك وهلا تقلي مشغول وكذا بالضبط فلقيتي انه هيدا العنصر البريشر اللي كان محطوط عليكي وعليه آه لقيتي فيه انه عم تاخذي ريزلتس منه كنت عم تطلبي منه اشياء معينه و... I loved it. So mm. I think you're referring to the the scene in the studio when I s- spoke to him about my feelings. Exactly. So for me, that scene felt like such a therapeutic experience. It was like me really opening up to him and telling him how I really felt. Um, and he couldn't just get up and leave because you're on set. There's a camera crew. Uh, you can't just walk off. He could have walked off if he wanted to, but it wouldn't look good on him. So he's like, you know what? Now I'm going to sit down and respond to you. So I kind of put him on the spot because I knew the situation. And I'm so glad we we had that conversation because after that conversation, it made us so much closer. So he knew how I felt. I knew his perspective. And now like I have a, when I watch, I rewatch the, the show, I have a very different like perspective on on certain things. I realized like me feeling some type of way about him being a DJ was so um, like irrelevant. Mm. You know, there's deeper things in life. Um, 
and like even people engaging with me so basically like i post i recently posted that scene on my uh, social media and i wanted people to give me their thoughts i wanted to heal hear he heal i wanted to hear people's thoughts so in the comments the one lady wrote she's like i understand how you feel as a woman and it's nice that you're expressing how you feel but you also have to realize that when your husband is djing these dancers because i was complaining about like how would you feel if i had dancers in front of me mm -hmm. these dancers are not in front uh, dancing for your husband they're dancing for the crowd it's about the the energy that's you know of, of the night so it's not you know you're looking at uh, as a female we look at details you know we're like yeah but you did this but, but men look at it as a very like overview so for bliss it's more like i'm not doing anything i'm going i'm working i'm getting paid i'm leaving he looks at it like that i look at it well you're going to work but there's this there's this and usually girls come to me and they say oh but how do you feel like your husband's around the most good looking girls when he goes to these nights do you get jealous girls ask me these questions i've never been in a situation where a guy says do you ever get jealous that your husband's like around uh, good looking woman or, or anything. So it's it's just we have to understand how men are and how women are. And I think this is always about self reflection. So when you watch when I watch the show in the beginning, I I wasn't happy with how I, the show portrayed me. I was really upset. You know, I didn't feel like that was really who I was. Uh, I mean, it was certain sides, but it wasn't really who I was. So in the beginning, I was upset. But then when I kept watching it over and over again, I'm like, I get it. I get what they, why they did that. This, the show is so successful. It was number two show in the, in the world when it came out. You know, that's something that we should be proud of and the region should be proud of, that a reality show out of this region is number two worldwide. Yani fi nas in, in South Africa, they know, know us. There's people in Los Angeles, people in Tokyo, around the world, they know how Arab, people look like how we act how we interact with each other you know if you look at it as a as a bigger picture it's a such a, a win for this region and for everyone if i'm going to be selfish i can sit here and be like yeah but you know i didn't like the way i look everything's not about me you know you if i look at it as a collectiveness i think in general like humans we have to look at things as a collective view so when you looked at it as a collective uh, lens you realize, wow, this was such a successful win, not for the show, but for our region as a whole, because the world now knows how Arab, uh, Arabs are. We are writing our own narratives, not the narrative they wrote about us before. Arabs are terrorists. Arabs are this or that. Like people were writing our narrative in the other side of the world. Now we are writing our own narrative and we're letting people see it. And not only that, it's like number two show in the world. So that is like a huge win. So now when I look at it, I'm so happy. Exactly, Anna. Anna, I have the same. Uh, I had the same thoughts or the same opinion. I said that from the beginning. And you know, the first time I the show, it gets criticized a lot. And I told them first, give it a chance. Uh, or second, uh, it doesn't have to reflect. This is doesn't have to be this is all the arabs or this is all about dubai it's not the the fa only one face of dubai mm. so just look at the positive things شوفوا انه هيدا الشو اول شيء انا مش عم بمدح الشو ما لي ما لي علاقه بالشو بس اي ريلي ريسبكت ذا فاكت قديش فرجه دبي حلوه انا بالنسبه لي دبي دوله على عربيه دوله تفرجت بالبيوتي تبع تبعها اللي كنا نحن عم نشوفه بهوليوود وعم نشوفه بلاس فيغاس ونحن مأثرين وهذا كله كمان اتس بروموشن اتس اتس برودكشن عمل لهوليوود نحن هوليوود روحي شو فيها هلا يعني اتس نوت لايك ذا موفيز انه هلا اذا بتروح على هوليوود يو ستيل هاف ذا ايمج اوف ذا موفيز بس اون ذا ستريت ما عم بتشوفي اللي الجمال اللي موجوده فيه بال, بال, بالموفيز سو so لما نحن بنحط برودكشن مرتب وبنفرجي مدينه عربية بجمالة وبشكلة وبالعالم تبعها حتى لو جزء صغير وحتى لو فيه 100 غلطة أو 100 إنه مش ومش it's not representing all the people uh, it's still let's look at the positive side of it let's نشوف قد إيه العالم شاف دبي هيدي الدولة العربية uh, فرجيها بصورة انترناشونال بصورة يعني واو بتعقد ولقيت بالمقارنة صرت تحطيها عند أي دولة نيويورك واي دوله ثانيه كنا نشوفها بس بالموفيز سو so, 
بالنهايه اتس ان انترتينمنت شو صحيح اتس ا رياليتي شو بس ع... رياليتي شو مش على كل العالم رياليتي شو عليكم انتم yeah. وعلى جزء صغير من دبي سو so, منا كل الحقيقه بس جزء حلو من الحقيقه مزبوط دبي فيها كثير عالم they have a dream و uh, they are rich و mm-hmm. they are successful و entrepreneurs و uh, they are seeking the dream مثل الامريكان دريم ناو ذير از ا دبي دريم سو اذا بنطلع فيها من هيدي الناحيه لا دبي بلينج فرجه صوره كثير حلوه عن دبي فور شور يا انا اتس ا ستوري سو وين دبي بلينج كيم اوت مي اند بليس ان ابراهيم وينت تو هوليوود سو وينت تو لوس انجلوس and we met someone that works in hollywood and is like in contact with a lot of people in hollywood and one thing he said that was really interesting and it still stayed with me till now he said you know people in hollywood are talking about dubai bling saying how is this uh, production that probably has like half of the the investment that are put in hollywood movies doing so well around the world and we're putting millions and millions of dollars in our hollywood movies and they're not getting to that level So now Hollywood has their eye on us. What is going on in this region? And you know, we should be so proud. Uh, Dubai Blink was a full Arab production. So from the director, mm. from the cameraman, from everyone, they were all uh, Arabs. So that's something we should be so proud mm. of. You know, you, you know, before it used to be like, oh, uh, the director, he's, I don't know, from the West. So he's probably like the best director. No, we have the best directors in our region. We just have to, you know, uh, uh, support each other. مظبوط believe in them and support and the idea that not everything is better than outside. That's true. 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 So so yeah it yeah. was so ممكن حدا اجنبي برا يقول له لا خلي جيبوا لي انا كل شيء وجيبوا لي سيارات وجيبوا لي هيدا طب باك تو مروان لانه حتى نطينا بسرعه على دبي بلينج uh, بدي اسالك uh, على موضوع مثل ما قلت الغيري وهيك uh, انت كمان هلا صرتي بالشو كمان انه انحطيتي بمحل صرتي بروفيشن صرت عم تطلعي بالقصص بروفيشنلي يعني صار اذا عندك فانز كتروا <تصفيق> وانت كنت بروفيشنال اون ستيج صرت تشوفي المعجبين والمعجبات و... وصرت تفهمي اكثر مروان انه كمان هو هي از بروفيشنال هي از ان ذا انترتينمنت بس هي واز لوكينج ات ثينكس بروفيشنلي و ومش يعني مش بس المرأة مختلفة عن الرجل لما المرأة انحطت بنفس الدومين اللي انحط فيه الرجل صارت تفكر مثل الرجل. Um, I agree and disagree with you. The reason I agree with you of the, of the overall, yeah, like the fan base increase. I understand how like fans are when people come before they used to come up. I mean, they still do. They come up to Marwan take pictures before I wouldn't get it. Now I get it because people are asking to take pictures with me. أبل. Abedin with pictures mm. never, but the thing that used to oh I was very sensitive about was the DJing part. So, صح إن as fans yeah I get it now, but I'm still not a DJ, so I'm never uh, I I will never f- know how it really feels because he's a DJ, he's very successful, he's been doing this for over 20 years, so I can never compare myself to him. Um, what I can do is work on myself and be a supportive wife for him and understand why. before i used to get jealous about certain things and real and now i'm self-reflecting and realizing these are small things there's bigger things that you should be worried about and it's 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 irrelevant you know mm. it's not something to 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 argue about or you know i i really think that that conversation in the studio really helped me self-reflect on on that whole uh, jealousy thing that i had from when we got married for sure yeah قلتي انه الاوكيبيشن اتس نوت ذا ساين اوف اني 
uh, faithfulness ولا it's not a sign of uh, if somebody wants to cheat or not يعني ما ممكن واحد he can cheat if he's a doctor ولا إذا if he's an engineer or if he's a, I think I heard you saying that yeah, إنه ما إلا علاقة شغلة الشخص إذا with the, with the entertainment business trust is a trust mm-hmm. no matter what you work بالضبط it's like uh, when you look at someone don't look at their occupation how much money they have uh, like mit- these things that are materialistic look at the character look at the the personality look at the values look at the morals look at how they treat other people that's what defines a person that would cheat or would not cheat these are things that we really need to look at we shouldn't say oh just because you're a dj and you're around a beautiful woman you're more likely to cheat absolutely not there is people that are um Uh, around men their whole uh, during their job but they still go and cheat on their wives so i think it goes back to the character of the person it has nothing to do with what they um, they do at all yeah the character and the relation between you and him and how much you trust each other yeah for sure is a is a, is a big thing uh, daniel uh, tell me more about you and اول شيء كيف تعرفتي على دي جي بليس طفولتك شوي صغيره tell me more about you Uh, you're an Emirati woman. Um, what was your dream when you were young? How was your relation with your mom? You love your mom so much. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So tell me, hey, Kishwa, on Um So I was born and raised in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I went to school there. I went to the same school since I, like from kindergarten until I graduated. I had the same friends group. Um, my parents were amazing parents and still are. They always supported me in everything I did. I was I always played sports uh, in school. Um, one thing that my dad always told me was education is the most important thing. Uh, he let me صح I'm an Emirati woman, but my dad gave me a lot of freedom. But he he also taught me how to pray. He taught me to read the Quran. He taught me about our religion, our morals, our values. So I was taught that, and he also taught me to have freedom. So I'm the person I am is because of my parents. You know, I have. The best of both worlds um, and uh, I think that what made me who I am today is the fact that my parents allowed me to express myself and be who I am and not feel like oh I need to like uh, be a specific way for my parents to love me my parents unconditionally loved me and they still do um, and I think one thing that really shaped me is the fact that my dad really emphasized on education So um, when I was in, I went to the American International School in Abu Dhabi, which is ASA, and I did this program called the IB program, which is called the International Baccalaure- Baccalaureate Program. So when I was doing it, I kind of like, I was really angry at my parents because um, in 10th grade, uh, I didn't apply for the IB program. Mm-hmm. And then my principal sent an, a letter to my parents saying, you know, Dani is very intelligent and we don't understand why she didn't apply. So my mom got really mad at me. She's like, what does this mean? You're not going to grade 11. You're not passing. I'm like, no, mom, it's, I don't want to do IB. She's like, no, you have to do IB. Like at that, then my parents didn't understand what IB What's program yeah. was. Mm. So they forced me to do IB. So when I was doing it, I was like very angry at my parents because it's a very hard program. So there is there was high school, which was the normal subjects. And then there was the IB program, which was the really hard subjects. Um, so we, our classes were divided. All mm. the smart kids, the nerds, were okay. the, IB. the IB. Does it save you a year in, the, in university? Uh, you can skip foundation year if you have good grades in IB. Yeah, some people could. So um, so I did the IB program and all my friends since kindergarten, they all went to high sc- to the high school program. Yeah. I didn't I had maybe one friend in the IB program with me. So when my high school friends were having so much fun going <laughs> out to the mall, I was sitting at home studying and all of that. But now when I look and I was still angry till I graduated, I'm like, I wish I didn't do the IB program because I ended up studying in the UAE because usually people that do IB is people that want to go study abroad. Okay. Uh, so I'm like, this was pointless. Why did I like waste my high school years and so forth? So one class that was in the IB program was called TOK, which is the theory of knowledge. And this class was a class, I swear, till today, it has changed my outlook on life. And theory of knowledge was a class where you have to question everything. Uh, 
So you watch a show, you question the show you're watching. What is being shown to you? What are the colors they're using? Why are they saying certain things repetitively? Uh, they would like, we would read a, a book and then they would say, on this page, how many times is the word dark, darkness repeated? Mm -hmm. So like, oh, it's repeated 10 times. Yes, because they want the reader to emphasize on the darkness that's happening in the story. So there were certain things that this class opened my eyes to that till today, with everything I do, I always question everything I do. And my kids, I want them to do the IB program because of how it develops your character and allows you to express your mind and it allows you to be very, uh, you question everything. And I think in life, we need to always question everything. We shouldn't be like sheep and just whatever someone says, you just follow it. Why are you telling me to do this? You know, question everything. Is there a reason you want me to do this? Is it to your benefit? Is it to my benefit? What's the reason behind it? Then when it makes sense to you, then you follow um, what's told to you. So um, I really loved that class. I love the IB program. So now when I'm saying always self-reflecting, when I self-reflect on high school, I'm so glad my parents made me do the IB program because it made me love to learn, uh, love to question, and love to, um, you know, just be a, a person that uh, encourages other people to seek knowledge. So I, I feel like I went on, but like no, I think it's great. it's really important. That's great, and I heard you're uh, you're also planning to continue studying uh, as yeah. well. You have a target in mind. Yeah. So when I was younger, I always told my parents, you know, one day I'm going to be a doctor. So initially, I applied to medical school in uh, when I graduated from high school in the UK. So I did the IV program, and they said, oh, you're accepted to medical school, but you need to do the foundation year. I was offended. I was like, me? <laughs> do foundation? I did IB. I need to go to year one. So I'm like, you know what? It's not for me. It's not meant to be. I didn't pursue the the, med, uh, the medical field. So I decided to do international uh, relations in the UAE. I, I decided to stay here. Um, but uh, after I did, I did international relations uh, major and a minor in psychology. Then I pursued my, uh, when I was pregnant with my first child, Zayed, I uh, studied for my master's and I graduated from my master's program when he was, I think, four months. And then, uh, inshallah, now my plan is to do, pursue my postdoc and do a PhD in sustainability. And this is something I promised my parents when I'm like, mm. okay, I didn't become a medical doctor, but I'm definitely gonna be a doctor uh, with my PhD, inshallah. And it's not for my parents, it's just the love I have for learning. I love mm. to learn. And I think for the rest of my life, I will continue to learn. And I think as humans, we, that's what we, we've been given a brain to always explore our brain. You know, there's so many things that ha haven't been discovered about the human brain. So I think learning all, should never stop for anyone. I think everyone should continue learning. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, choosing sustainability is something also great because uh, Abu Dhabi and uh, UAE in general, they, they support so much uh, um uh, sustainability and mm -hmm. they they, uh, they encourage the i mean they have built a city about sustainability and uh, so you'll be uh yeah they, i think th as a field you'll find a lot of work in in that uh, sector inshallah i mean it's not i'm not doing it for work i'm doing it because it's something i'm personally passionate about i care about uh uh, climate change. I can I care about sustainability, and the fact that Abu Dhabi in the UAE is going towards that direction. They're they're we're having COP twenty eight soon, which is something huge for this region to have COP twenty eight in Abu Dhabi. We have Mustar City, which is the city mm -hmm. that like are based on I think solar panels. So this is if we we need to care about our future generation. I think uh, as a human, we will be selfless or less selfish if we care about someone else. And if you care about the future generation, you care about their, their environment, you have to start raising awareness now about if we don't take care, about, don't, care, don't take care of our environment, what's gonna happen to the next generation? Are they gonna have the oceans? The oceans are drying up. Uh, are they gonna have this beautiful, the mountains, you know? Growing up, like I used to travel with my parents and I see the most beautiful mountains, greenery. Now, you don't see that. Like, I don't know if my kids will be able to see what I saw when I was younger. So I think we really, really need to talk about climate change, 
caring about the environment, sustainability. It's a very important thing. And lil SF, no one talks about mm. it. You know, it's very, it's, uh, it's hard to find. Leonardo DiCaprio talks about it all the time. Mm. He did a movie on Netflix called Up, I think that's what it's called. And he did it as a funny thing. But when you watch it, you're like, wow, this is real. And I think to some extent it is going to happen if we don't care about our environment. That's amazing. You mentioned something you were studying and you get uh, your first child, Zayed. Mm -hmm. um, tell me, uh, tell me uh, more, uh, Dania, and uh, how did you meet uh, uh, Marwan? Um, and also the challenges uh, that you faced uh, if I don't know if he was working in DJ at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a, as a woman, as a girl, you was in university, you, you, you get married, you have a child. Um, mm -hmm. So I met uh, Marwan through mutual friends. Um, when he wanted to marry me, he said, if I want to marry you, what do I need to do? And this was like, we're at the metro and I'm, he wanted to show me the metro because the metro had opened then. And I'm like, is this, is this guy proposing to me? This is how he's <laughs> proposing. And I'm like, well, either you call my dad or your mom calls my mom. And he's like, okay, cool. Uh, ask, like, send me your mom's number. I'm like, okay. So the next day I send my mom's number. I didn't think he was serious. You know, because he was a DJ during that time. And I thought, come on, he's a DJ, like he's a player. There's no way like this is going to happen. But his mom called my mom that week and she said, you know, my son is interested in your daughter. He wants to like marry her. Uh, what are what do we need to do? Am I, and uh, during that time, I was in university. I was doing my bachelor's. I was in second year university or third. So my mom said that my daughter can't get married right now. She needs to graduate. Once she graduates, then we can talk about marriage. But we're happy to like meet your family, get to know you better, which is something that I was really lucky to, to have because during that time until I graduated, I was able to meet his family. He met my family. Our families got along. So, you know, I got to know more about his personality and be sure that this is the person that I want to live the rest of my life with. So um, we got married in... Um, when I graduated, like a few a few months or six months mm. after I graduated, I was I had just turned 24 when I got married. Uh, I was very young. Um, I, I like to think that I was mature at 24 mm. uh, because I'm like, you know, خلاص, I graduated from uh, university. I want to stay on my own feet. I want to have my own house. I want to have my own family. So I was ready to move out of my parents' house at 24 anyways. So I got married at 24. Um, we always had this discussion of having children and I always had the fear of giving birth. Like, I just, I don't know, it's this fear that growing up, you know, everyone says like, oh, it's so scary, childbirth, you know, like all these horror stories that you hear. So I had this huge fear about it. Then one of my really close friends, um, she got married after me, but she had, uh, she got pregnant and gave birth. And when I asked her, how was your experience? She's like, you know, it was super easy. So hearing it from someone that was so close to me, I'm like, you know, maybe I am ready to have a child. So three years after we were married, uh, I had my first child, Zayed. Um, and before uh, before getting pregnant, I was already studying my master's. Dania, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go back to the ومروان mm -hmm. لانه هذا الموضوع حساس مش على مش على كاكزامبل يو كم فروم كونزرفاتيف كلتشر يعني كلتشر كثير بيهتم بالعادات والتقاليد وهيدا فلما تعرفتي على مروان واخذتي القرار بالزواج قد ايه قد ايه البنات عم بيكون عندهم يعني وقت معين ليتعرفوا على شخص البنات من جيلك من نفس الكلتشر قد ايه انت هذا الشيء بتلاقيه واجهتيه يمكن يمكن محظوظة أهلك هيك مركزين على التعليم بس بنفس الوقت they are open minded وفاتحين لك المجال تاخذي القرار اللي انت بدك اياه بالحياة <تصفيق> يعني انت عم تعملي اللي انت بتحبيه انت ان ان هلا بال از بموفي اندستري از ستار انتربرنور عم تعملي يور اون بزنس سو ايفري ثينج از اوبن فور يو لايك ريلي اند ذن اي جاست ونت ستوب اون هاو 
how much did did you face um uh, an opportunity to know marwan as enough uh, to mm-hmm. to pick as your husband or it was a nice coincidence and a lucky uh, chance thing i think um what worked in our relationship was the fact that when he proposed i was in university and his mom reached out so that was like a a good sign for my family that this guy is serious so another thing that i was very lucky with is that i got to know him and his family maybe if it was a situation maybe if i had graduated and they came and proposed my parents would have said no they would have said absolutely not we have other people that want to marry her mm. and you know like his his uh, occupation is not the typical occupation that everyone like you know uh, the arab family you know there was a lot in the beginning also my parents were like are you sure like no i don't think it's going to work i'm like get to know him you know i want i'm like you know we, we don't have to get married right now i'm still studying i wanted my parents to get to know him and and i trust my parents decision in everything i do and before even meeting marwan this was a conversation i always had with my parents my parents used to say they say to me and to all my siblings uh there's obviously love marriage and there's arranged marriage so my ma- my mom used to say if i find you someone to my brothers like if i find you someone like arranged marriage uh you meet the girl and you decide if you want i'm not going to force you to marry this girl and when you find someone and if you find someone you love and you want to marry that person you come to me and you can't force me to accept this person you know it has to be both ways which is something we all agreed on so when i met uh, bliss and i told my parents about him um they had to get to know him i knew him i knew he was a good person i knew he had good character i knew he had amazing values he loved his family he was a good human being but i needed my parents to see that so this two years they got to meet him really well and i was lucky other girls um maybe won't have this opportunity maybe hmm. you know uh, a guy proposes to them maybe at work he sees the girl and he says he's interested and he proposes and straight away the family says no you know we have other people that want to marry our daughter you don't tick all the boxes it's no so you know i think my situation i was just lucky i think everything is meant to be and it was meant to be for me to marry uh, marwan i just just worked out yeah habita al fikra no it doesn't matter who will arrange it we both have to agree on the yeah, person exactly so i i can i can propose someone i can i can say i like that guy and i think he's he's suitable mm-hmm. but you have to know him or they can do that they can they're not going to force you they're yeah. going to suggest for you that uh this is the guy and it's it's very important from both parties mm-hmm. they know Uh, same understanding the club yes yeah, and if you look at my family i'm married and my other my younger brother's married and my younger brother had an arranged marriage and if he had the balance uh, برايك, uh, well my brother is very happy in his marriage hmm. you know like him so his wife my my mom saw her and he liked her and and she told my brother there's this girl i think she's suitable for you Um, he was first like, no, I'm not interested. But when I was like, get to know her, maybe it's going to work. So they got to, they talked to each other on the phone with both families knowing about it. And it just works. Like when I see them, they're a perfect couple. And it was an ar- arranged marriage. You know, some, um, and my my marriage was a love marriage. So we're from the same parents, same family, same values, same morals. But one child got married arranged and they're happy, alhamdulillah. And I got married through love and alhamdulillah, I'm happy. So I think it was that understanding. Now I still have another brother and sister that they're still not married. Uh, I don't know what's... Which way it will go. Which way it will go. Hmm. But I think the most important thing for parents are for them to have a very... nice understanding with the ch- their children you know you can't be strict on your kids and be like this is my way or the highway i'm the parent i make the decisions it doesn't work like that anymore mm. you know maybe like a parent will force you to get married to someone that you don't want to marry but then you'll end up being a cheater because you're not married to the person you want to be with or unhappy or unhappy mm. why would you want your child to be ha- unhappy so i think you know parents need to really listen to their children and children need to listen to their parents It's both ways. It's not only one way. So you have to listen to your parents. If your parents say no to a specific person, ask them, why are you saying no to this person that I love? They might say, well, they might not be from the same background. They might not be from the same religion. They might not be. They might have a good reason. And if you can back up your reason, say, well, you know, if they're not the same background, we have the same thoughts. You know, there's it should be a, a dialogue. Yeah. How did you back up your reasons, especially? Um, 
um, with the occupation with the with DJ with your friends حتى مش بس with your parents يعني ما ما اجوا صحباتك اجوا قالوا لك انه ديري بالك او الموضوع يمكن يكون مش سهل مش سهل عليك كيف فيك تعيشي شخص بالانترتينمنت بزنس ابدا ماي ماي فريندز وير سو اكسايد لايك او ماي جاد يو ميرينج دي جي بلس لايك ات واز سوتش ا كول ثينج فور ذيم هي واز فيموس هي واز يا هي واز فيري فيموس سو واز ا بيج ديل ذات اي واز ميرينج دي جي بلس اه اوكي سو ماي فريندز وير سوبر اكسايد ماي بيرنتس وير اي ثينك ذي ذي هاد تو نو هو هي واز اند وي ذي realize how he respects his family his mom his dad they're like yeah we want someone that respects their family because they, he will respect our daughter when she, when she gets married to him so i think uh, it worked out alhamdulillah it was perfect oh okay perfect perfect yeah طيب uh, back to dubai bling هون انا كنت بدي فوت بدبي bling um, اول شيء في سيزون 2 ما بعرف قد ايه فيك تحكي عنه بس they announced it Yeah, they announced it. Yes. There is a season two. Okay, great. Inshallah, it's going to... And you are in season two. Yes, I am. And there's a new one too in season two. Yes. There's Mona Kattan in season two. Who else is there? I don't know. ما بتعرفي؟ ما اعرف اذا منى كتان نو منى كتان از ذير اي دونت ثينك ام الاو تو سي اي شي كيم تو ماي بودكاست اند شي سيد ات اوكي سو اف شي سيد ات ذن يا شي از ام لايك اي دونت ونت تو جيت ان تروبل سو نو اي ثينك نو اي ثينك ذيف انونس هلا يو كانت جو تو ديتيلز بس اي ونت تو اسك يو اباوت يور فريند شيب ان جنرال قديش قديش ضليتوا فريندز صار في جروبات بدبي بلينج وانقسمتوا هيك لكذا جروب كنت انت وفرحانه وابراهيم دي وير لايك ون جروب سبورتنج ايتش اذر وات بيكيم ناتشرال كنتوا بتعرفوا بعض من قبل؟ So Ibrahim, I met him through Bliss because uh, his uh, Forever Rose is right next to Karak Inc. and Beats and Cuts. Uh, he has big smoke. So all the, their businesses are neighbors. So I've met Ibrahim through Marwan, like just very, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. That's it. It wasn't like a very uh, deep type of friendship. Uh, Farhana also like social media. It wasn't like very, you know, deep. Um, everyone else. Yeah, I think we met on the show. Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Everyone else was on the show. Um, obviously, the show brings you closer together because you do things together, like uh, certain uh, things happen. Me and Ibrahim click, me and Farhana, we got along. You know, it's just certain people just get along naturally. Uh, I think in, initially I got along with everyone, um, most of the people. And then eventually, like certain situations show people's true sides. So... Uh, that's what a reality show they put you in certain situations to bring out different uh, sides of you and then and then the the you the friendship continues or it does not continue mm-hmm. yeah i think that forget about the reality show in life in general um you're friends with someone and you travel with them when you travel with them you see a different side that that's a situation where you're like actually you know when i go back i don't want to be friends with this person because i saw the side of them or like a certain situations uh when you're friends with someone uh you find out from another friend this person's talking behind your back then you're like okay this friendship will not continue so in life or reality show or anything it's normal it's a progression of any type of relationship or friendship you either continue or you back off So so I continued my friendships with some people from the show and, and some people I just backed off. 100% well traveling is a good example I know it's under so many activities under stress and كثير بيشبه الريالتي الريالتي شو بس علاقتك بفرحانه قويه لانه you were supporting her in a way in the show you were backing her up and ma عارف اذا backing her up بيقولوا بالانجلش عم تدعميها يعني انه ديو انه لقيتي انه اشخاص ما بدي اعيد نفس اللي قلتي كذا مره بس انه يو فايند اوت ذات يو نيد تو بي ستاندينغ نيكست تو ا فريند بحاجه لدعم كانت عم تتعرض لانه يمكن انتقادات او اشخاص عم بي يو نو ما بعرف اذا تنمر بس عم بيحكوا عليها او يقولوا انه شي اولويز يوز هير friends for her work uh, mm-hmm. during the events and all these things and you're still defending on it and you consider is this your personality where you support uh, 
Absolutely. Generally. That's like my personality in any situation. يعني, if it wasn't Farhana, if mm. it was مثلا, anyone else from the cast, anyone else from the cast, they were talking about, I would have defended them the same way because it's not right. You, I just thought that situation was not right. It's not right to say these things about someone. Um, and I, I couldn't stay quiet. I'm a very a self-expressing person. ما أحد شيء في قلبي. And I, nothing stays in my heart. Whatever I feel, I express, I say. Um, few white nuns, they don't. Some people like, uh, if I'm upset, some people, if they're upset with you, they keep it in their heart because mm. they're like, no, I don't, wanna, I don't want the, I don't know what the word is, but uh, the confrontation. I don't want the confrontation, so I'm not going to tell them that this person hurt my feelings. Me, I can't. I, as, as a person, I can't keep anything in. I have to express myself. Yeah, but the people that become friends with me are the real friends. They stay because they love me exactly the way I am. Then in front of them and behind the back, behind their back, I'm the same person. So, and the ones that I lose, it's okay because at some point, I'm my bluntness, my truthfulness will hurt them. So it's better for them to not be friends with me. Um, it's that I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's a good thing to be blunt. You know, sometimes you need to be more diplomatic. Exactly. You need to, mm. and that's something I'm working on. You know, uh, I think you you need to you know feel the the room, feel people's personalities, uh, be more empathetic towards them. Maybe some people are more sensitive than other people. So this is human beings are always evolving, and you have to always change yourself. You have to always try to be a better version of yourself, mm. and that's what I'm doing. So. Um, what you saw that moment when I defended Farhana, if it was anyone else from the cast, I would have done the same thing. Um, if it was a stranger, I would have done the same thing. I'm That is my personality. Like uh, I was in Tokyo maybe 10 years ago and I was walking with my friends on the road and uh, we saw a guy on the floor, head is bleeding. Like he, I thought he was dead. So I went to him and I'm like, I, I'm like, oh my God, someone help him. He's bleeding and no one was touching him. And mm. I'm like, please, like he's bleeding, help him. And I started crying. A stranger in Tokyo that I don't, I don't know him. I start crying, crying, saying, please, someone help him. And in Japan, I think it's a thing where if someone's injured, you're not allowed to touch them until the ambulance comes. Like maybe that was like their, and then someone's like, no, no, you can't touch him. And I, because I couldn't help him, I'm crying. So that's who I am as a person. So even a stranger, I will try to help. That's like who I have always been 10 years ago, and I'm still the same person, and I will still continue being the same person. I'm not going to allow that to change me. I think it's. I think more people should be able to to have that in them. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it's, uh, helping. Hey, it's a it's a great. Uh, يعني ال example اللي عطيه. It's totally different. It's a great a great thing. But مر مرات مرات helping is like interfering in between other friends or in or uh, relationship, or أشخاص يعني شايفين وجهة نظر مختلفة. So mm-hmm. it's not only helping. يعني إذا إذا بكون هلا أنا عم عم بأخذ وجهة نظر تانية mm-hmm. ممكن يكون it's really interfering or taking a side of someone. I disagree. I think it's it's so simple. It's right and wrong. That's it. What is right and what is wrong. What was being said at that table was wrong, and I had to point it out and say what you're saying is wrong. And now if anyone else thinks what they were saying is right. I, I will disagree with them because I have a lot of reasons why what they were saying is wrong. I will defend my points. I have, I can back up why I think everything they're saying is wrong. So I don't just say, oh, what you're saying is wrong just because I want to cause drama between a friendship. Hmm. I say it because I have valid reasons, it's wrong. This guy's cr- uh, on the floor, bleeding uh, in his head. It's, this guy's in pain. It's it's simple. He's in, he's either dying or he's bleeding. You can see it with your eyes, what's happening. And as a person, you need to try to help them. It's just, it's so simple. So I understand you're trying to like play the devil's advocate and yeah. try the other, and I, and I respect that as, a, as an interviewer. Do you think uh, that, uh, somebody harmed uh, Farhana Al-Adibi that you had to defend her? Absolutely, because Farhana's main source of income is her job being an influencer. Now they're sitting there questioning her as an influencer, making fun of her occupation, 
that is very harmful and not just any woman a woman that is a single mom so she has a child that she needs to support so you're sitting there alhamdulillah both of them the girls they they have uh, happy marriages they have their husbands that are supporting them i know zaina works so she also supports but i mean they have a very comfortable life why would you go and attack her character of, of being like an influencer I just I thought that was wrong. Okay, your problem with Zena was because of uh, what she said about Farhana and you supporting her, or also because um, many things also with Ibrahim. You're supporting Ibrahim. You were his, his best friend. And Ibrahim also was interfering in many, many gossiping and many uh, talks, and and you were his buddy. I mean. Yeah. So I think uh, the the issue. I think it started with, um, you know, sometimes people, when they show you their true colors, believe them at the first time. So I think what uh, we all like in the beginning when we're filming, we all got along. When that moment, when they started talking about Farhana, that was like a red flag for me. Right. Red flag. Let me just be aware of this. The next time there was an interaction was at the desert when uh, me and Farhana were at the desert. They were at the same place. I was going to go to the event for LJ's uh, desert thing, but Farhana asked me, so I, I was trying to be respectful to both um, and not take sides. So I went to Farhana. The second red flag was the interaction between her and Farhana instead of her like telling Farhana, you know, you're right. You know, I shouldn't have, uh, but she brought Farhana down for defending herself. That was mm. the second red flag. Now we're still fine, but it's these things are like clicking. Then later on, I get a phone call from Ibrahim saying, you won't believe what happened today. You won't believe who came into my office. I'm like, who? And then he told me I wasn't there, right? I wasn't there. I just heard what had happened through Ibrahim, right? Who, who came to his shop or the coffee shop, which is coffee a public shop. place, yeah, yeah, coffee. which he considered his office. No, no, he, sorry. He said coffee shop. Mm -hmm. He didn't say office. Yeah. So he said they came to Forever Rose Cafe. So he told me, you won't believe what happened. This happened. This, he told me the whole situation. Now that's a third red flag. I'm like, wow, I need to watch out for this person, you know, because if all these red flags are right in front of me, am I next? Is she coming after me? So and also this was all off camera. There was a lot of things that was said to me about her saying, you know, she's saying these things about you. She's done this about you. She's going and doing this. That, like there was a lot of gossip behind mm -hmm. the scene that was already build doing that build up for me already already and the the the, 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 the red flowers. what i saw mm -hmm. with my own eyes except for the cafe i wasn't there but i heard and i believe ibrahim because he's one of my best friends so i believe his side um and actually this is a i called safa because i was close to safa then i called her and i said safa what happened today you went to ibrahim's cafe whatever and she's like she she didn't give me the details that he gave me She said, yeah, we went there and he was very disrespectful to, to us. He said something about me and you gossiping. Like, you know, I heard her side of the story, but I still called her because as a friend, Sah Ibrahim is my best friend, but Safa was my friend then. So I called her to just hear her side, you know, being a good friend. Um, so anyways, that's like, there was things that were said about her, uh, Zaina uh, from other people. Uh, Zaina saying this about you, she's doing this, 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 and already I had seen those red flags. So I think it was just a build up. Uh, and then when Ibrahim, uh, when we decided to go to her office, Ibrahim was like, come with me. I'm like, sure, I'll come oh, with you. Why did you decide to go to her office? I think it was as a friend, Ibrahim said, can you come with me? I don't want to go alone. You know, uh, you know, Zaina came with Safa and they're close and you're close with me. Come with me. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, let's go. It wasn't. It was going. It was supposed to be a conversation. It was supposed to be a very normal conversation. Ibrahim wanted to say what he had to say to her, um, but it turned out bigger than that. That's what happened. And this scene went viral. And this. I scene, think this scene is yeah, what made the show. Ex exactly. I mean, this scene went really viral, uh, and people were doubting: is it? Is it? Uh, Yani, staged or is it real? And uh, as we look at it, it looks so real. Uh, but tell me more about the details. Who started? And this is always the doubt. Like, um, who started? She's the one who threw the 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 mug at you. You put the mug in a in a, in a weird way, in a aggressive way, and then she reacted accordingly. And 
Tell me more about details. So obviously, like, if you ask her, she's going to say, I started. If you ask me, I'm going to say she started. Natural. But you, as the viewer you saw, what do you think? It was a big reaction from her, but there was an action started by you. Okay. So would you have acted the same way? In my office? Mm -hmm. Yes. You would have? Yes. If someone just put a cup in front of no, you? No, not put. Okay, then what? No, this is, I'm just saying exactly yeah. the facts that yeah. happened. It was a conversation from both ends. She was talking, we were talking. I think she was alerted uh, that there is an action happening, that you're putting the mug in a, in a maybe a, a alerted her in a way that she re reacted. She did not did an action towards you. Yani she did not throw the water on you or throw the mug on you. She removed the mug away uh, from the table with mm. her hand. No, no. She swiped her hand like this. And uh, and then you together have a conflict. You yeah, started the so, conflict. So As I remember, and I watched it yani, how much? Yeah, eight months ago. so um, the way you say it mm. is uh, she had a reaction because the cup was placed. Yes. Right? Yes. And she, so I also had a reaction when she tried to throw it on me. So it's the same. She had a reaction. I had a reaction. But the first, what was the first thing? I just put the cup on the table. Mm -hmm. Now, if that or brings out other things, okay. I'm not here, honestly. I'm you were, uh, sorry, but you like al were, you were so tense. And they, you both reacted at the same time. And your reflex and her reflex were quick and fast due to the tension that happened. So I can't Absolutely. say like you did something or she started something. You both reacted on a on a on a on a act that nobody intended to do. Absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, and I'm not here to defend myself. I'm just here to state I'm a very factual person. The facts, what happened, step by step, and that's it. It's for the audience to decide who started, who who was wrong, who was right. Maybe both of us were wrong. Maybe both like, mm -hmm. you know, it's a very, uh, it's it's a, it's a scene that has divided opinions. You know, there's some half of the people are on my side, half of the people are on her side, and obviously, like you asked me. I obviously would defend myself. And if you ask her, she will obviously defend herself. So I think there's no way to answer that. Like you, you can never tell. Was it a good situation? Absolutely not. I don't think it was good for me, for Ibrahim, mm -hmm. for her. Absolutely not for her. It was in her office. It's not, it was a very bad situation. Did it affect you, Dania, emotionally? Absolutely. You affected me very, very, strongly actually it really did because never in my life have i been in an altercation and the first time i'm in an altercation it's filmed and it's on one of the biggest platforms ever yeah i mean how forget about the filming that's one mm. part of it the other part is the fact that that happened none of us wanted that to happen i don't know how it happened i don't know I don't know. It just happened. من شو خفتي أو من شو خفتي من بعد ما صار هيدا الشيء؟ يعني شو اللي الأشياء اللي قلتي أنا okay uh, first I I didn't want this to happen or oh, second it's affecting me and maybe it's gonna affect people around me uh, of my image. What would my uh, maybe uh, children think about me or أو شيء لأنه as you said it's a reality show it's not uh, an acting scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I always stand by this and I still stand by this till this day. I don't regret anything. So if you were to ask me, would you go back and change that scene? Absolutely not. I would have kept it because it made me who I am today. And I'm so proud of who I am today. And I love who I am today. And I wouldn't change a thing about it. And I think if that scene didn't happen, Dubai Bling would not be as successful as it is. Because that was one of the most viral scenes that went all around the world. And that's what people were talking about. You need to watch this show. This thing happens. So if you look at it on a positive way, I know it's hard to look at a negative situation in a mm. positive way, but I'm, you know, you have to teach yourself always to do that. 
I think that's the the beauty of humans. You can always switch the situation. So if you look at it as a positive, that show, that scene made the show successful. The success of the show made us successful and gave us so many opportunities. So when we look at it like that, yeah. And I think if my kids see this, I want them to know that, you know, you should be able to defend yourself. I think every individual should feel that they can defend themselves. If there is a bully, you stand up to a bully. Don't be intimidated by a bully. I'm not intimidated by any bully. And I think the long run, um, yeah, I think people should be able to defend themselves. That's great. Um, Dania, من بعد ما الشو هلا we have a season two. قد ايه قد ايه ضوء يعني صار في اضواء عليك انت وقد ايه فتح لك opportunity and then how much did you use uh, that uh, um, chances or opportunities towards your business? Uh, I mean, it gave me amazing opportunities, mm. huge. Like my life changed uh, day and night, like when the show came out. Um, obviously, it's because it's it's been way more positive than negatives. I've never, knock on wood, alhamdulillah, never been in a situation where someone confronts me and says, oh, we don't like you because of this, this. I've always received love anywhere I go. I'm not, uh, like, I can walk by myself in a very busy event and no people will come up to me and show me love. I, I'm not intimidated by anyone. Um, I think it's given me so many mm. uh, positive uh, opportunities. I'm very grateful for it. Um, and of course, it's it's helped my businesses be more successful as a result. Everyone on the show. Hey, that, that my question is like, no. كل حدا on the show they started their own business يعني غير البزنس حتى تبعهم يعني في اشياء انا هيدي كثير بهمني امرا مش من ناحيه انه what did you guys do بس how easy is to for somebody to create a fashion line how easy for somebody to decide on like one day you know to change his career um قد ايه هيدا الشيء انه مثل ما تصور انه فيه نجاح وفيه شغلات Uh, الانسان ممكن يفكر يعملها in reality it might not be the, the case يعني صح so uh, I started my first business in 2013 which was a streetwear snapback line called BYD BYD and uh, it was like I started in New York when I was in New York I, I ordered my first 12 caps brought it back to Dubai everyone loved it and then that's when I started my business uh, BYD which is snapbacks that are like uh, western streetwear but has the Arabic calligraphy Arabic mm-hmm. uh, influence on it so I struggled with my cap line from 2013 um, until people started knowing like for a few years So for anyone trying to start a business, it's not like, oh, start a business, start a fashion line. It's going to be successful. Everyone's going to buy your stuff. No, the show, honestly, was wh- whoever started a line after the show. Of course, maybe their designs might be nice, but s- there's so many designers out there, so mm. many talented Competition people. Is so high. Mm. I've seen the most talented designers, young, the youth. But they don't have that kind of exposure, like Netflix exposure. So no one uh, are aware of their 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 line. But there's someone that maybe is on our show, has the huge exposure of Netflix. They decide to start a fashion line. They have their own fan base from Netflix, and their their line becomes successful. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're not talented, but you know, a lot of talented people that may be even more talented than people on on the cast. Are struggling. It's not easy to start a business. It's not. It's really hard. So I know it firsthand because I started in 2013 before. Um, this is really interesting. So when I married Bliss, he was a public figure. I never used to put pictures of my face anywhere. I had a private account. I never took pictures with him publicly. I was very private. The only public account that I had was my uh, by D cap line, which wasn't even pictures of me. It was models wearing my caps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wasn't even a known figure uh, for me to like b- use that as a backing for my my line. So I struggled. I really did. And I understand like up and coming designers that are super talented in this region, why they would struggle because it's not easy. 
So yeah, the show gave us a lot of opportunities. Yes, and 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 this is a good message to 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 tell people that business is not as easy as it looks in in Dubai bling. Yeah, you know, just opening a or making a fashion show or making a yeah you know, a line fashion brand or or aya aya business is not gonna go that fast. It needs time. Business Sorry. needs years and studies and. competition is very high yeah but the people that were casted for dubai bling were successful before dubai bling mm-hmm. so they didn't just choose anyone and then made them famous and then they became successful yeah. so everyone that came on to dubai bling had something going for them like i had my youtube channel that was one thing that was going for me obviously bliss everyone knows him he's like a famous dj ibrahim had forever rose cafe before dubai bling so everyone had their own thing going on um now if they started a business on the on the by bling and it's successful and people see it's successful i think it's because of the exposure that they got from the mm-hmm. show um but it's not easy to start a business no. for sure great um would you say that season two is going to be better than season one a hundred percent i think it's going to be so much better than season one i don't know if, if that's possible like people probably don't think it's possible because season one was so good but season two is so much so much better well, why i can't tell you why i mean no don't tell me details why do you think what what made it better in terms of like or why because انت خبريني انت شو فرق معك انت كشخص اكسبيرينس اكثر صار عندكم ثقه بحالكم ثقه بالشو ثقه بالتيم حتى التيم نفسه اللي عم بيصور صار عنده ثقه بحاله اكثر يعني في اشياء ممكن ت Tell me the why's, yani, me, don't but tell me the details. Um, I think one main reason is the dynamics. So the relationship, the dynamics, they were so much stronger in season two because uh, season one, it was like a very shallow type of friendship that we all had relationships. Hmm. But season two, there were very strong dynamics. Like you said, there's two groups, very strong bonds. Um, I think we were all more comfortable being around uh, camera after going through season one. So season two, like the camera was there, we were ready. We were like rolling. Season one, um, it was an introduction to all of us. Like the world was introduced to us. Season two, the world already knows us. So now they want to see what's going to happen. So season two is like, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm so excited for it to come out. I don't know when it's coming out, but when it comes out, I'm so excited. Because I, even though I'm on the show, I'm a huge fan of Dubai Bling. So I can't and wait you to can't see watch it. it. You can't watch anything, so huh? no. When it comes out, when you watch it, I watch it. Yeah. So I don't get to see it before anyone else. None of us get to see it before anyone else. So it's going to be good, inshallah. I hope so. وفي فرق في فرق بالتوقيت بين season one و season two. So في أشياء كتير صارت بحياتكم. Yeah, صح صح. There is أظني um, a year, يمكن mm. uh, almost like a year. يعني إبراهيم تجوز. Yeah. Uh, اولادك ما شاء الله يمكن كبروا بس ما كانوا موجودين بالسيزون 1 صح انت جربتي انه ما يعني ما نوت تو هايلايت نوت تو بوت لايت اون اون يور برايفت سايد او ذا كيدز يا اي ثينك ات واز جست لايك ا ناتشرال ديسيجن وي ديدنت تراي تو فورس اور كيدز اون كاميرا وي ديدنت ونت تو فورس ذيم اون كاميرا اند بي لايك اوكي كم فيلم اور كيدز يو نو It wasn't that kind of situation, but if they were filmed, we didn't. If there was a situation where they had to film, had <laughs> rule the season one. Yeah, I put a first episode on, and five minutes in, my son's like, "This is so boring." Put cartoons on. <laughs> they didn't even watch it. They they weren't interested at all. So they haven't even seen it. They're too young, my kids. They're uh, five and three, so so it's not something they're interested in. The first actor side of your family in uh, season two. Uh, I think so. Hmm. I mean. I don't know. I have to see it. I have to see the show to, to tell you. Um, but I think I try to kind of show my other side that I'm a mother, um, like I'm a family person, all of that. So let's see how we, I don't know because I haven't seen the season two. So when but it comes out. But it's the relationship between you and the groups? Or are you That's a question for Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> شو بنقدر ناخذ منك؟ Look, the way you can take from me yeah. is that it's amazing. You will not be bored one second. Um, it's it's amazing. Wow. Season two is amazing. It's gonna you're gonna love it. It's uh, it's gonna be a surprise. There's some surprises. There's always surprises. Yeah. That's what makes the show mm. successful. There's always surprises. 
از ذير ا مومنت وير دو يعني انت ما ما حضرتي بس انه برايك في مومنت راح تعمل الترند بالشو اي ثينك ذيرز مور ذان ون يا مور ذان ون مومنت ار يو انفولد وذ ون اوف ذيس يس انت شو بتحبي المشاكل انت هو سيد ذس مشاكل بي ذا اوبوزيت يو دونت نو يو هاف تو سي يو لايك تو تريجر ما انت قلتي بتحبي ال ترندز قلتي بت ايفن ميمز استعملتي كلمه ميمز يو لايك ميمز يا اي ثينك يو نو اي سو ون واز انترفيوينج مي اند سينج او ذا ورست ثينجز تو بي ا ميم ام لايك اكشلي نو اي ثينك اتس ا بيست ثينج تو بي ا ميم بيكوز ذات مينز يو دون سم ثينج ذات بيبل ار توكينج اباوت يو نو ام سي دونت مايند بيكومينج ا ميم ابراهيم واز ا ميم ان ان ذات شو اسمها هيدي قال ضايقتني ما بعرف شو الجمله جمله طويله كثير حلوه Uh, well, I don't remember, but... Yeah, yeah, when he was someone... LJ, 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 LJ. That was a meme. Yeah, it was everywhere. It was all over TikTok. It went super viral. Yeah. Everyone was... Saw- People that didn't even speak Arabic were like saying it word for word. It was yes. so good. Um, but yeah, I think it's great to be a meme. I don't mm. think uh, Ibrahim minds it. He loves it. And I think it's great. Um, but yeah, let's see. Season two is going to be good. You're going to love it. Well, I can't wait عن جد ناطرينه وانا من اول ما طلع من فكرته كنت كثير مشجع فسيزون 2 از ا ستامب ذات از ا سكسسفول وما راح يعملوا سيزون 2 unless it's making money and it's successful وان شاء الله سيزون 3 ويمكن في سيزون 3 uh, what else you can tell me on season 2 Well one thing I can tell you but I can tell you everything is that you need to watch something that me and Ibrahim are working on and you're going to find out about it in season two. It's something huge, and I think everyone's going to love it. So that's the only thing I can give you. Wow. Yeah, it's something me and Ibrahim are working on, so yeah. It's like a business? Uh, it could be. What is it? it could he, be. he likes flowers, he likes, uh, and you like fashion. You like makeup. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about makeup. Okay. Uh, your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So, Inti, uh, You were like you. You had a viral video. Yeah. The most most watched uh, tutorial or video. Tell me what was the title S- for it. Uh, it was um, going to the worst reviewed makeup artist yes. in my city. Yes, I yes. love that. I mean, the idea is amazing. Thank you. You chose to go to the worst reviewed makeup artist. Yeah. And you went there. Yeah. And, and this video is like almost 10 million now. Yeah, yeah. So that's what actually made my YouTube channel like. blow up okay um basically there's this trend going around on youtube all the girls were going to the worst reviewed makeup artist so what i did is i went and i watched like over 30 videos and i picked up like what was like you know interesting so i studied it i did research and that's why like i always say i go back to like education education is always about research about mm. you know looking at what's out there so that's what i did so i went i did research and i'm like okay this works now i need to go find the worst reviewed makeup artist and i found a place that was like so bad i went in there started filming and then i went home and i'm like let me just write my thoughts so i started typing my thoughts whatever And honestly, like when I posted it in two days, I had like 20,000 views. And before I used to get like 200, 300 views, you know, my channel wasn't really yeah. that popular. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh my God, 20,000 views, amazing. Then ne- the week after was 100,000. Then the week after 200,000, just kept going up and up. I'm like, what is going on? And my subscribers were going up just based on that one video. So then people were commenting, please do more, please do more. So then I started doing more videos and then those went viral. But the the first one was the most viral one, which like is a 10, almost a 10 million. It's like nine point something now. And my channel uh, grew really fast in in a year. I hit 100,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. And uh, my, my channel now has like over 25 million views, which is amazing. Wow. Like, I'm so happy. But unfor- I mean, it's see, it's a blessing and a curse. So because I'm in Dubai Bling, I can't do any of those anymore. Yes. Because they recognize me now. I can't go in and be Why like. Why not? Why not? I mean, you can. You can still No, because do- before I would go in and, and pay the makeup artist and say, uh, this is for my wedding. <laughs> My me- do my wedding makeup, do my graduation. They're like, you're, they're probably gonna <laughs> say you're dead. Very genuine. And I'm saying you can continue in, in doing makeup uh, oh, yeah, yeah. tips and this, but, but la- going to a shop? La- la- I can't do it anymore. 
خلاص now I get right. So now I'm trying to like change my uh, style on mm. YouTube. Like I'm trying to, the last video I posted was about a day in life of a reality star. So I filmed like our promo for season one, uh, doing our makeup, our hair, the look. So I posted that just so everyone can get like a look into our lives, like behind the Netflix, like just as a vlog mm -hmm. uh, type. Uh, so I'm trying to like kind of do different things uh, in that angle. Um, I still need to do research, need to see what works. Because before, the worst reviewed makeup artists and makeup, beauty, all of that used to work. Now I need to change my style, so I'm working on that. Um, but obviously, YouTube is my first love. Um, this it, is what I'm going to ask you. You love YouTube and you want to continue keeping... Yeah. Always, because mm. honestly, YouTube is what made me famous. Like, it's not... People think Dubai Bling is what made me known. But I used to, like... Dubai Bling, maybe now more people know me because it's Netflix is so much huger. Uh, so much bigger but youtube i did have people that would stop me and ask me like once in a while for pictures because they recognize me from youtube i had fans from other places in the world mm. because youtube is like a platform that's not just based on like if i post it from dubai it's not like only my viewers are from dubai they're from all around the world so youtube i'll never forget like the the success i got from youtube and i still like it's still ongoing so people like message me they're like you know we used to follow you from youtube and now we see your your succession into netflix um so i love that people have seen my journey and i will still continue doing youtube i don't think i'll ever stop doing it no uh, great that's amazing and i love youtube uh yeah. dania my, my last thing i want to ask you how how do you deal with your uh, with the comments mm -hmm. positive or negative and how much it uh, affects uh, your life your mental health now you're becoming يعني, you, you are famous not becoming famous you became famous so قد ايه تغير بحياتك قد ايش في comments قد ايش بتبعدي ما تتاثري ب ب بالاراء بالنيجاتيفيتي بهالشيء كيف بعديه عن حياتك عن حياه زوجك Mm -hmm. um, so initially, um, we go back to YouTube. My first experience of like hate uh, mm. type of comment was when a YouTuber did a full video uh, about me saying really mean things about me oh my God. in Spanish. So I had to get a, my Spanish friend to translate what she was saying about me. So that was my first time experiencing like online uh, hate, right? So um, it was hard. Uh, and then it was even harder because she was actually a kind of famous YouTuber. So all her followers were coming to my page and swearing at me in Spanish. So all so Spanish. So you get his followers. But why is that? Uh, because she didn't like about how I did like one video about the worst reviewed makeup artist. She's like, why did she do this? She could have told them to fix it. Like she was just, uh, mm. you know. But maybe you made them famous. I don't know. I'm, I, bad yeah, bad so she, news is good news or bad. Uh, good pub uh, publicity pub is a good publicity. Any publicity is mm. good publicity. So. I think what she was trying to do, she knew that I was going viral and people were talking about my videos. So she wanted to jump, jump onto the, the wagon, but like, you know, mm. uh, hate on me, which is fine. Uh, it was really hard for me. I think that was like my lowest point. I also had COVID during that time. So it was like a very low point for me, COVID and then having hate and I was crying and I was so upset. Like, why is this happening to me? Like, it was a very uh, negative time for me, but I think that taught me. So when Dubai Bling came out, I was getting, uh, obviously, there's no, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it's, I mean, everything's amazing. No one says anything bad. Everyone, if it's successful, people have to say something bad. So there are people that write mean comments. Uh, initially, I, I didn't know how to deal with it. But it's always about self-reflection. You, you think about why are they writing all these mean things? Why are they saying this? What is it in their life that's making them do these things? So then you look at them like as a joke, like it's a, I laugh with them. Like sometimes they, they put emojis that are like a snake emoji. I answer back like a rat emoji, like snakes eat rats. You know, like it's just funny engaging. And like someone says, oh, I, we don't even know why you're on the show. I'm like, honestly, I don't even know why I'm on the show either. <laughs> so like, you know, you just engage with it and make it something funny. It's- um, It doesn't affect you, it doesn't- Not anymore, it used mm. to. It used to now not a not at all because um, I think it's it goes back to uh, self awareness, self reflection, and also like understanding why the other person are saying these things. What's triggering these emotions from them? And then when you really think about it, you feel sorry for them. You know they're like going online to maybe they're going th through something in their life. Yeah. You're a public figure. 
you're their punching bag, they come and leave a comment. You know, I'm, I'm happy to be your punching bag. Come or leave a, a, a comment. I can take it. Some people might not take it, but I can take it and it's fine. Um, I think it's it really reflects on self-awareness, being confident in who you are as a person, um, knowing that people that you love, love you for who you are, trying to look at the positive. I think looking at the positive is a very uh, important thing. Like I always want to go back to this. I think what makes us special as human human beings very special is that we have the ability to take something so negative and turn it into positive. And I think when human beings uh, tap into that, they realize the power that they have. I think a lot of people don't know how powerful they are. But if you go in and, s and find like the darkness inside you and flip that darkness into light, only a human being can do that. No other species can do that. So that's something like super uh, powerful. And I think that's what I've learned to do. Take something negative, a negative comment and turn it into like something funny like something positive and uh, just move on with your life. You know? Yes, definitely. And it's not only change you, it might change people's life as well. You might uh, uh, like they they might change the way they are thinking, especially if you treat them nicely after they are, uh, you know, attacking you or telling you negative comments. They might really and, and, and go back and reflect on themselves and say, OK, why I'm doing this? She's she's nice. She's successful. Maybe I should learn something from her. Exactly. No, it's true. دانيا thank you so much thank you for having me thank you كثير انبسطت بحديثك و uh, we can't wait to see you in Dubai Bling uh, season 2 ان شاء الله I'm waiting على نار ما بعرف امتى رح ينزل بس uh, I can't wait me too thank you for having me it was it was a great podcast thank, thank you thank you حبيبي thank you